Hi, my name is Jenny Burrell of Burrell Education and for the last 20 years I've dedicated my working life to helping moms get fitter from the inside out. And I'm delighted to have been asked to create this program for busy women and moms everywhere using the personal power plate. So, for the next 12 weeks, I'm going to be your personal coach and take you through a set of exercises. We're doing movement, we're doing rest, we're doing stretches and releases to get you back into your body and feeling as energized and vital as possible. The beauty of this program is that for 12 weeks, I'll be your personal coach. It's progressed, so every Every single week you'll get stronger and stronger and of course you can work out with me in your own home. So I'd just like to give you one major cue um, about the personal power plate if you've never used it before. So we have the plate, here it's on, and we have the mat. So if you're working like us in bare feet, I'd really like you to use the mat on top of the plate. And then one key thing, when you're on the plate and we have the vibration running, we want to work with soft knees. So that just involves you having a slight bend to your knees. And then what we need to do is not then go into sort of a squat or a bend over. The knees are soft, but then we keep the torso, your upper body nice and erect, and we keep your pelvis in a neutral position. So we don't want to go backwards and we don't want to be tucked under. We just want neutral with a soft knee. And that way the vibration stays away from your head and your face. Okay, so anytime you can feel it creeping up there, just soften your knees and you'll feel so much more comfortable. So before we start, can you have all the kit that we need to hand? You need your Pilates ball and can you blow it up until it's, you know, pretty tense. And then we need this little mini band and you'll come to love this mini band as we go along. Can you have the band, the yellow band with the handles and then your larger diner band? And if you can just have them to hand near to your plate so that as we're working out, you don't need to go searching around for your kit. And before we go, can I ask you that you have some water handy, a towel, because you might just need it to wipe some sweat away, and then also ensure that your room is well ventilated so that you feel comfortable throughout the workout. So in the program, I talk a lot about grounding your feet and sending energy through your feet. And believe it or not, your feet actually do connect to your core. So this is what I need you to do when I say ground your feet or send energy through your feet. So when we're on the plate with the soft knees, I want you to imagine the weight of your body going equally through your big toe, your little toe and through your heel. And imagine that if I had a sheet of paper and it was underneath both feet and I wanted to take it away, you wouldn't let me. And so the weight through the big toe, your little toe, through the heel, and if I wanted to take a piece of paper out from underneath your feet, you wouldn't let me. And can you feel what happens then when you do that? If you're doing it with me now, you'll feel your legs, your thigh muscles turning on, you'll feel your bottom muscles turning on, and can you feel that there is extra tension in the core without you doing anything at all? So that's what I mean when I say ground your feet. So now an explanation on exhale on exertion. You'll watch as I go through the programming, through the training sessions, that I say exhale, activate and lift your pelvic floor. So as we're rising out of the hardest part of the exercise or performing the hardest part of the exercise, that's called the exertion. And that's when we need to be exhaling, blowing out, so that we're not building pressure in our tummy and through to our pelvic floor. So if we were squatting we're on the plate, and we're squatting, so the, the work, the exertion part of this exercise is to bring your body away from gravity. So that's when we exhale. So here we are in a squat, and then I'm coming out, 
of the squat. So then it's exhale. And then I tension and lift the pelvic floor. So that's exhale on exertion. So time for a little anatomy lesson. I'm not gonna go too in depth, but I think I need to just show you where your pelvic floor is and what I mean by activating, tensioning and lifting your pelvic floor. So most of the red area here uh, consists of your pelvic floor muscles at various layers. There's the attachments towards the front, the major attachments, this is your pubic bone. And then towards the back, this is your coccyx bone. Okay, so pubis at the front and then the coccyx at the back. We then have your bony sitting um, bones and these are called your ischial tuberosities. So I won't use that again, I'll just call these your sitting bones. And you can feel those as well through your buttocks. So these are the major bony attachments for the pelvic floor. So when I say activate your pelvic floor, what I need you to imagine is that you are drawing the front of your pelvic floor and the back of your pelvic floor towards each other. So that's the pubis here at the front, the coccyx here at the back, and they're coming towards each other. And then you're lifting the entire pelvic floor. Okay, so do it for yourself just as you're stood. So stand with a neutral pelvis and imagine the front of the pelvic floor coming towards the rear of the pelvic floor. So front and rear coming towards each other and then lifting. And then what you need to do is do that in concert with your exhalation, your blowing out. So we're here, so exhale, blow out and bring the coccyx and the pubis. Imagine them both coming towards each other and lifting the pelvic floor. So that's what I mean about activating your pelvic floor and lifting. And when we're doing that, we most certainly don't want to be like squishing and gripping around our glutes. How your core should work. Well, we all know that the rigors of pregnancy and then giving birth, the early postnatal and even the late postnatal period and all the demands that are put on mothers means that the elements of your core, your tummy, your pelvic floor, your back and even your breathing might not be the same as they were before you had a baby. And actually, childbirth is only one of the issues here. For many people, this synergy, this relationship between all the components of the core don't fire in the correct order. So before we launch ourselves into a vigorous exercise program, we just need to check that everything is firing together. So as we exhale, and I just want you to do that for, do that for yourself now, I want you to stand with a neutral pelvis, nice and tall, and I want you to exhale. I want you to blow out. And what we should feel is tummy tensioning and tummy going in. We should feel the pelvic floor tensioning somewhat and we should feel the muscles around the lower back tensioning. That's on the exhale. So exhale, belly goes in, pelvic floor has activity and tension and so does the lower back. So We've got a bit of an issue and a bit of retraining to do if that when we exhale, tummy doesn't go in, but goes out, blows out. If we can feel a bearing down on the pelvic floor instead of a tensioning and the lifting and whether we're not really connected to what's going on around our back. So I want you to take some time to ensure that this is happening for you. We want you to exhale. Is your tummy going in? Is your pelvic floor activating and tensioning? And can you feel a tension around the back? And then we have that synergy between all the components of your core. Then you're better able to transfer load through your core when you start your exercise program, because that's what we want. Not the tummy bulging out as we exercise or not having a feeling of bearing down on your pelvic floor. 
So let's talk about diastasis recti. That's when the abdominal wall has been stretched during pregnancy and then in the postnatal period, this causes an instability while we're waiting for the abdominal wall, your abdominal muscles to come back together and regain the strength that they previously had. So we test for diastasis recti before we start an exercise program to ensure that we're going to be supporting the healing and not working away and against healing. So Lucy here is going to test herself. So if you can get into the same position as Lucy, lie down comfortably with your knees bent and feet flat on the ground. Okay, Lucy, I want you to take your first two fingers and then you're going to place them into the middle of your tummy, just underneath the bra line. And then you're going to slowly lift your head and a tiny bit of your shoulders and just feel what that feels like in the middle of your abdomen. That's great. Okay, so I'm feeling Lucy and she's fairly early postnatal and I can't feel uh, diastasis recti here. But if you do have it, then when you're feeling the midline, you will feel a softness and then your fingers dipping down into the gap between the two bellies of say your six pack muscles. So just to recap, you want to use the two fingers, lift the head slightly and the shoulders a little, and then feel the midline and keep going down until you get to your belly button and then go an inch or so afterwards. Okay, and rest Lucy, that's great. So what do you do when you find a gap and you find that this midline is very, very soft? Well, if you find a gap that's two or more fingers wide, I'd like you to follow the advice that I give in your educational booklet, because I feel that you'll really benefit from the help of a specialist professional in this area. But meanwhile, I'd like you to start with the concentrated core exercises in this program rather than the full program. So what it doesn't mean is that you'll never be able to do the full program. It's just that we want to start building your body back to strength after having a baby from the inside out. And the way that we do this will need specialist help. And then you can come back to the full version of this program and really go through those progressions smoothly. So it's in your best interest to start slower and then finish really strong. So let's get going. In this first section, I want to go through all of the exercises that we'll do in this program just once with Lucy and go through some very, very key cueing points so that you get the best out of this program for the next 12 weeks. You only need to watch this version once just to understand the key phrases and then after that you're just going to press go and get going with the program. So our first exercise is a body weight squat. So the key things, we want you to work with the grounded feet. So Lucy, we want the pressure through the big toe, through the little toe, through the heel. And already can you feel your glutes and your, uh, your uh, legs really working much more? Okay, from there, you're gonna go down into the squat. So it's a sit back. As you rise, Lucy, exhale. So work with the grounded feet, drop it down, lovely. And as you rise, exhale and lift the pelvic floor. Do you remember in that cueing um, section when I talked about activating the pelvic floor? And again, let's go. So drop into the squat. Good, exhale, lift the pelvic floor. And again, a couple more, drop down, exhale, lift the pelvic floor. Okay, so that's the body weight squat. Grounded feet, exhale as you rise. Okay, second exercise. So we now then want Lucy to take one foot off the plate, 
Let's drop off the plate. Wonderful. And now she's going to squat down. Good. And then as she rises, she's going to take the leg away. So this is really unconscious work. Work for the pelvic floor without you really having to do anything. As she rises away from gravity, that's when she exhales. And then she also has that lift of the pelvic floor. So eggs, perfect. So drop it down, exhale and lift that pelvic floor. You've got it, Lucy. Wonderful. Great. So again, working with that grounded foot and exhaling every time you rise. Perfect. Okay, so this next exercise, a triple extension squat. Okay, don't get freaked out by the name. Really, really simple. So Lucy goes down into a squat and as she rises, she comes onto her toes. And look, this key thing, look at her elbows. Elbows are soft and it's almost like you want to just pat yourself on the back and say, well done for doing your workout. Great work. Beautiful, Lucy. That's the triple extension squat. So now we're moving on to a bicep curl. And in this program, you'll see that something as simple as a bicep curl, we can start to activate the core and the pelvic floor just using a bicep curl. So you need your Dynaband and you're going to pop it under both feet. And then Lucy has developed a little twist here on this movement. So the key thing, make sure you've got enough tension in your band so you're really doing some work. Make sure your knees are soft. And then, and Lucy performed the bicep curl. Can you see that she takes the arms out at the sides as she's working? Okay, so now the breathing, as she lifts the arms, that's when she exhales. You exhale and then lift the pelvic floor, tensioning the core as well. Perfect. So knees are soft, and then the arms are angled outwards. The next exercise, we want some cardio. So it's really simple, not a lot of impact, and we're going to lift the knees up. We're going to make some tension using the palms, so press your palms together as you're working, and then we're lifting the knees towards the elbows. So as you're working, have some tension in your core. Make sure we're not working with the belly soft and the palms are pressed together to create a tension throughout your upper body. So we get some work there as well. Perfect. You got it. So for this next exercise, you'll need that yellow band with the handles. Lucy's turned sideways so we can really see what's going on. So I want you to work with that grounded foot, all the energy through the big toe, the little toe and the heel. Now the arms are going to go straight back and with every press back, we get an exhale. Having the tension going through the foot and the lower body means that we're adding the work to this exercise. So we're just getting more bang for buck. Wonderful, Lucy. So every press back, we get the exhale. So throughout the program, you're going to grow to love these little bands. They're a little slice of heaven. So you're going to pop it around your ankles like Lucy has and then stand beautifully tall. From here, the foot that's staying put, make sure we've got the energy and the grounding through that foot so you can feel your glutes and your thighs working. And from there, the other foot pushes back and you can do a little rest. So I'm hoping by week 12 you don't need to rest, but we've just got a little kickback. Push, good. And can you feel your glutes working? Push, great work. So a little rest, we'll start with a little rest, but then as we progress through the weeks, we're going to have that foot floating and then we're just pushing back. And can you hear Lucy's breathing? She exhales with every single pushback because that's the work phase. And for this next exercise, we're going to use the mini band again, but can you see Lucy has moved it onto the forefoot? So pop your band around the forefoot and get ready to go. We want the knees soft and then we want a step side to side. Now the key points here, knees are soft as always, but we keep that tension in the band. Keep the tension in the band, don't allow the band to go soggy. 
and then we keep the upper body nice and tall and we keep attention in the core as we're working. Perfect. And this will really feel the work on the glute med, the sides of your buttocks. So now for another cardio interval, and this is called a plate traverse. Lucy's going to go side to side across the plates and make sure you don't have anything in the way that you could trip over. And it's as simple as this, but we'll get the heart rate up and get you into that fat burning mode. Perfect. Okay, we're back to using the resistance band now. Wrap it around your hands and get into position like Lucy. We need the feet active so that we've got work coming through the feet. We then have the soft knees. Now we're gonna hip hinge. So really we want to ensure that we're working with a strong back as Lucy has. And what we're not doing, Lucy, can we just show bad form? There we go. This rounded back. We don't want that. So nice, strong back with the natural curve. Now from there, Lucy comes up and we want the exhale here. So come back into the hinge and exhale as you come up. When she exhales, then she activates and lifts the pelvic floor as well, so that we've got everything working in perfect synergy. So active feet, hip hinge, strong back, and exhale with every single rise. Okay, for this next exercise, we're going to use the yellow band. So we want it underneath both feet, and then you're going to cross it over. Okay, we want the hip hinge, so a soft hinge at the hips and the soft knees and the feet lovely and grounded. Now, a really key thing here, if you just do one rep, Lucy, can you see she takes the arms apart? Now, there's a potential there to build up a lot of tension here between, um, at these muscles here, they call your trapezius. So we want to think about having the head away from the shoulders, so lengthen down and relax. Another key cue, no looking up, look down, keep the neck lovely and lengthened. Okay, so with every repetition, every a part of the arms, we need the exhale as well. Keep the feet beautifully grounded and then exhale, lift that pelvic floor with every single rep. Perfect. Great work. So keep the neck light, nice and long. Keep your head away from the shoulders. So for this next exercise, it's called a Bulgarian lunge. And here with the Bulgarian lunge, we've got one foot on the plate, the other foot is off the plate. The key thing here, when you bend the back knee to go down towards the ground, what we don't want is this front knee shooting over the toe. So it's a straight down, focus on the straight down with the back knee. Great, and as you, exhale, as you rise, you exhale. And this front foot, we're ensuring, we're ensuring that this front foot is straight ahead and grounded. We've got lots of energy in that foot and it's working as you're going both down and up. So we want the torso lovely and erect, no leaning forward, no leaning back, just perfectly neutral. Perfect, Lucy, perfect. No tucking under. That's great, wonderful. This is the last go slow exercise before we really go full tempo. So it's an invert, evert squat. And you might not have ever done this before. So we turn the feet in and we turn the feet out. Your heel is the point of pivot. So Lucy, let's go. Perfect, good. So feet are out, feet are in, feet are out, and feet are in. And what, what do I need you to do with the core? Just work with a good tension and keep breathing. That's lovely, great work, nice. Okay, so that was the go slow, explaining lots of the important cueing points. Let's get ready to go full tempo.